So as of recording this video, the year is still 2020. I still want to shoot on film. Film labs still don't have super consistent hours and I still shoot on Polaroid, specifically instant Polaroid film through the Polaroid SX70. But there are a few things about this camera that made me want to go seek out a different option. The first thing that really made me want to find an alternative with this camera is the fact that there is no tripod mount. Now, that's not a huge deal when you're doing a lot of handheld photography and you can get an adapter that will mount this to a tripod, but especially considering how slow the film is in this camera, shooting, especially in low light, is a pain in the butt because you either have to hold it very still or set it on something that you hope holds it stable enough, which is hard because you have to angle it up so the lens can see what it's looking at, or you're pretty much just relegated to shooting in brighter light environments and hoping that the film picks up enough light to get a good image. And don't get me wrong, I get why the original model didn't have a tripod mount, because Edwin Land's original vision for this camera was something along the lines of a wallet, where you pop it in your pocket, take it out, unfold it in the most satisfying sounding way possible, take the picture, have the picture, and then just fold it back up and put it in your pocket, which made sense back when people had jacket pockets. That doesn't really work in today's world. Even the pockets on this are too small for this. Secondly, there is no way to attach a camera strap, like at all. So where I would like to normally hang it around my neck or under my shoulder and just take the camera with me, I'm kind of forced to take the entire camera bag, which has space for things like extra film, the flash bulbs, instruction manuals, none of the stuff that I would normally carry with me. I just want to load this with a pack of film, throw it around my neck and take it with me, but I can't. And the third thing is that this is a really early model. This is a 1973 Polaroid SX-70. This thing came out one year after the original launch of the SX-70, and it's in really good cosmetic shape and has all its original accessories. And I'd like to keep it that way because I don't want to have to go paying to get this thing refurbished because I dropped it or broke something when taking it open. It's just, I don't like being nervous when I take my camera equipment around with me and this really makes me nervous that I'm going to do something to break it every time I take it out to shoot. So with all those things in mind, I started looking for an alternative and well, <laughs> clearly you read the title because you're here and you know that I found an alternative. You probably also know that it's still a Polaroid SX-70. It still has that just mm, satisfying opening action and it fixes all the issues I had with my 1973 model while giving me a bonus for the casual photographer who might just want to point and shoot instead of a enthusiast grade camera. And that's this little growth on top, which is Sonar Autofocus. But before we get into the autofocus part of this camera, let's talk about the things that it fixed. So the first one is that it has a proper tripod mount. And because of the kind of tripod I use, I have a really tiny little quick release nut that I can just screw into the bottom and mount to my tripod. And it's far enough back that I can just leave it there, use this like a regular camera. And then when I want to tripod mount it, it's already there, just lock it down. It's so nice to have. The second thing is that it has proper, kind of proper lugs for camera straps. And I say kind of proper because the 35 millimeter camera straps I like to use don't work on this. They're a little bit bigger because they're meant for 35 millimeter cameras, but Polaroid actually makes smaller camera strap options that fit this kind of setup. So Maybe at some point I'll buy one. There's one that I like a lot. So I think that is gonna be probably the purchase I make next for this camera. And lastly, this is from 1978. It's newer and I found it in worse condition, which generally isn't a good thing. But in this instance, it's not in great cosmetic shape. The leather's a little rough. It had some residue on it from one of the uh, chemical packs exploding from whatever roll of film was thrown into this last. And it wasn't anything a bit of scrubbing couldn't fix, but it definitely brought the value and my worry of taking it out and getting it damaged way down. So this literally fixes all the problems I had. It's got a tripod mount, it's got strap points so I can just hang it off myself like an ornament, and it's in not as pristine shape as my 1973 model, so I don't have to be nervous about taking it out and shooting with it. All right, cool, so I literally bought the same camera in worse condition with features that you can find on pretty much any modern camera. So why bother making another video about this if I already made an SX-70 video before? Well, because this has this big growth on top, which as I mentioned earlier, is sonar autofocus. This is a feature that in my opinion, takes this style of camera from a sort of enthusiast grade instant film camera with full manual controls 
to a more casual shooter friendly camera. So the average person who might want to pick up Polaroid might try this out and be more inclined to use it than the old model because of that autofocus. And I kind of think Polaroid agrees because they recently released the Polaroid Now, which is a I-type Polaroid camera, one of the newer ones with autofocus. But in my opinion, the autofocus on this is a lot cooler. And especially back in 1978, a significantly more kind of marvelous invention than the kind of autofocus that we've come to accept today. The sonar autofocus, as the name implies, uses sonar. It sends out an inaudible sound that bounces off of whatever the subject of the image is. And when it receives that information back, it tells the lens where to focus. It is awesome. And it is insanely quick. Like, well, speed of sound quick, obviously. And because of that, this has quite a few advantages, but it does also have a few disadvantages. Like I said, one of the biggest advantages is that it is fast. Like I said, speed of sound fast. So when you press the button in just before you take an image, it snaps to focus. Like, watch this. Looking at you guys, done. Looking a little closer, done. It is that fast. There's no sort of hunting back and forth like you get with the modern face detection or contrast detection autofocus because it's not looking at the image. It's just bouncing sound off of something and waiting to see how long it takes to come back. So it really kind of makes the whole instant photography thing feel that little bit faster because the focus is almost instant on top of the instant film portion of it. Secondly, low light photography is awesome with this. Now you do have to throw a flash on, which looks kind of ridiculous. Let me show you. So like you already have this giant growth on top and now you've made like the Polaroid tower of power, which is just sort of hilarious looking. But if you're using a flash in a low light environment, this is great because it doesn't care what kind of light level there is because sound travels in the dark too. And because it's just sound and doesn't care what kind of lights in the room, it just cares what's in front of the camera. It can be very precise in any lighting condition. For example, this picture I took of a microphone stand in front of a giant white wall. A lot of cameras might struggle with that and kind of go to the wall first and then come back to the microphone because it realized that was closer. But all this had to do was say, hey, this is where the sound came from. It was closer than wherever the other sounds came from. So focus on that. And that was it. Oh, and that shot was taken while mounted to a tripod, which is why it's so stable. So that's another uh, that's another plus for having a tripod mount on this thing. But with all those advantages, there are a few disadvantages, like the fact that if there is anything in front of your subject with considerable enough mass to bounce the sound back first, it's probably gonna end up focusing on that instead of your intended subject. And you will have to go in, I love that sound, and manually adjust the focus to your subject. Now, you can do that. There's a little switch on the front that you flip down and you can manually dial the focus back and forward. And when you turn it off, it goes back to infinity. So you don't have to worry about messing up the focusing motors. And if you like taking pictures of subjects that happen to be in a car or through a window, you will be using that switch a lot because where contrast and face detection autofocus excel at seeing a face or the contrast of a person through a window and focusing on that, this, again, doesn't look at the image. It's just looking for the sound that comes back. And sound doesn't pass through glass. It bounces right off of it. So if your subject happens to be behind a window, and I actually learned this by watching in an instant, he made a really cool little animation. I'll show it here and hopefully he won't come after me. This will bounce off the glass first and not actually capture the subject. So you are going to have to manually focus if your subject is behind a window. So after talking about all that, the advantages, the disadvantages, everything, I can still highly and confidently recommend this camera if you're looking to shoot Polaroid instant film through a proper SLR camera. Everything I talked about in my previous SX70 video still applies. You can check it out over there. You still have to get the same film for SX70, but I did discover you can buy ND filters that go over newer 600 speed film, so that would also be an option. But it fixes all the issues I had with my previous one. It gives you the tripod mount, the lugs, and it is slightly newer. You can find these for generally around the same price, but you also have the autofocus. So for the casual user, it is even more approachable than the regular SX70. But with me highly recommending a camera like this, it would kind of be irresponsible for me not to talk about the price. And if you remember from my previous SX70 video, I went onto Polaroid's website and discovered they still sell these. Now I did misspeak in the last video. These are not new ones that they're selling. They are refurbished, 
but they're still charging $399 for this autofocus model. Ouch! Now, that is only $10 more than the non-autofocus model that they sell on the website as well. So if you are going in to spend that much money on a refurbished Polaroid, you might as well go $10 more and get the one with autofocus. You have that option if you choose to use it. But for the more price conscious among you, you can always look at antique stores and eBay. And in my instance, I have found all of my current Polaroids at antique stores. This one is no exception. I got this Originally, it was priced at 60 bucks, but the seller was willing to negotiate because of the fact that it was not in great shape. He didn't know if it worked, which I kind of lucked out and it did. And I got a steal on this camera, which is why I always recommend masking up and going to an antique store first if you're looking for something like this. If you are staying at home or you don't have an antique store near you or you just don't like going out places, eBay is another option, and the average price you'll find them for out there is between about $100 to about $200. So it's about a $100 range depending on quality and the accessories that it comes with. So if you're price savvy, eBay or antique stores. Antique stores have given me the best luck, but eBay is a little more consistent, so dealer's choice. Either way, if you're like me and love shooting on film, but you can't really scratch that itch with 35mm film because of COVID, the SX70 is a great option. And the autofocus model is even better because it gives you some of the luxuries of a modern camera, but all the conveniences of an SLR that shoots instant film. Thanks for watching guys, that's been it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I promise that I'm probably done talking about SX70 Polaroid cameras for a while. I got some other stuff I wanna talk about, but I wanted to make this video because it just seemed like so much fun. <laughs> Either way, that's it. Thanks for watching guys, and I hope you enjoyed this video. A like would be appreciated, subscribe would be loved, and leave a comment letting me know what you guys think about this camera, and apart from that, I'll see you in the next video. Make sure to be there and have a good one.